Manchester United. What a performance. Before I get into anything, any analysis, any, any things that I even picked up from the game, just what a performance. We Nobody was expecting Manchester United to come out as victors over Liverpool. The most I would have even given them was a draw. I predicted that Liverpool would win this game by one goal to nil. Manchester United come around and just completely, completely blindside Liverpool. It was like a completely new team. The lineup comes out and I see McTominay starting. I see Eriksen in the midfield with Bruno. I'm just like, what? Against Liverpool? Even with all the injuries that Liverpool have. You know, it's a really injury ravaged squad. I'm thinking that midfield is going to get ran through. But listening to, you know, some analysis and, and kind of determining from my own type of sense of how Manchester United should play, I realized, you know, right now the situation is so dire. All they need to do is show hunger and show fighting spirit. At least try to earn a draw. You know, no one's saying, you know, you have to go out and beat Liverpool outright because no one was expecting that. No one was expecting it. I'm sure the Manchester United players didn't even expect, you know, to get a win. They probably thought, okay, let's go and give our all and see what comes of this game. Manchester United, wow. Wow. From the off, it was constant pressure. From the off, it was unrelenting, you know, fighting spirit. Lissandra Martinez had a brilliant game. Varane had a brilliant game. It's safe to say we won't be seeing Harry Maguire for a while. Luke Shaw... Um, started on the bench. Malasio was excellent. He had Salah in his pocket for most of the game. You know, even when he miscued his tackles, even when he mistimed his interceptions and mistimed, you know, the reading and trying to understand where the ball is and get the ball back from Liverpool, he made up for it. He ran back and sprinted every single time. You know, the one, one of the best things I saw from him today, besides his defensive duties, or I guess, you know, in line with his defensive duties, was... Uh, I believe it was Virgil van Dijk who played a, a diagonal ball. And this man, Malas uh, Malasia, first he, he intercepts the ball and it looks like it's going off for a corner. And then he sprints with all that he has to prevent the corner kick. And I'm like, this is what we need. This is the type of player, personnel. This is the type of hunger that Manchester United need. And I'm not saying that we couldn't get that with Luke Shaw, not saying that Manchester United couldn't get that with Harry Maguire, but let's be real, those players are too comfortable in their positions. Now they're gonna be looking at this game and seeing how their counterparts fared without them. And they're gonna be wondering, okay, we gotta turn it up in training. We have to do everything that we can to get back into the starting lineup, but let's be real. Malasia and Martinez today, just unreal. Jaden Sancho and Marcus Rashford finally get on the score sheet, finally breathe some life. Into, into what we thought would be one of the two best winger partnerships. You know, I, I really have high expectations still for Jaden Sancho. Marcus Rashford had kind of fallen off the pace, but today he showed determination. Today he was pressing. Today he was taking players on and capped it off with a beautiful finish. Jaden Sancho, we always knew he had that composure. And even in the post-match, he said he didn't realize how much time he had, but that, that comes from just knowing yourself. And Jaden Sancho today, defensive duties as well. Getting back to help Delo, who isn't the best 1v1 defender, but still. I mean, everybody on that pitch talked. You know, communication is key on a football pitch. They talked. They fought for each other. They made space for each other. They provided passing options. They came back to double team, whether it was Luis Diaz, Roberto Firmino, who was dropping really deep into midfield. You would see McTominay or you would see Erickson and Bruno swarm. That is what you want to see. Yes, it was tiring. You know, some of the players look gas at the end of the game. But fitness comes with... Th this, is how, this is how the fitness develops. Trust in each other. David De Gea finally not making, you know, clueless mistakes. You know, there were some times where he was still trying to play it out from the back when he didn't need to. But for the most part, just booted it long. Now, this video is just my raw reactions to the game because I am just, I'm in awe. Any football fan will be shocked that Manchester United actually outplayed, for the most part, outplayed Liverpool. Possession means nothing in this game. Liverpool kept possession but didn't really trouble Manchester United until they scored in the, what, the 79th, 80th minute? You know, there were chances for Manchester United to go 3 or 4 nil up. Ten Hag must be over the moon, but... 
watching his post-match conference um, or interview, you know, he's a smart guy. He is a smart guy. This is one game. Yeah, the guys are going to be happy. They're going to get back into the dressing room and think, wow, we beat Liverpool. Let's go on again. But that is what it... That's exactly what they need to do is go on again. Next week, the, next week is Southampton. I don't want to see another Brentford Brighton performance because it's Southampton. Play Southampton just how you play Liverpool. Treat Southampton um, as if it's Jurgen Klopp's men or as if it's Pep Guardiola's men. You have to play and earn the right to win games in the Premier League. We've seen that. Yesterday, Manchester City and Newcastle played out one of the best spectacles of the young season. But Newcastle earned the right to be on the same pitch as Manchester City. They went 3-1 up. Newcastle over the champions. You know, me and my dad were talking about it. At the start of the game, Manchester City scored within the first five minutes. We were like, man, Manchester City's running away with this league. And then Newcastle just turned up. And I'm not comparing Manchester United's current state to, you know, Newcastle versus Manchester United. You know, Manchester United are still a big team. But in the past, you know, however many years, they've fallen so far by the wayside. And today was such a monumental victory. And I, I, I have just a little bit of an inkling that because Casimiro was in the stands, you know, they had to show out. They had to show out, right? Because the new $84 million man is, is in the building. You have to show him what you can do. And Casemiro being added to this squad, a performance like that, if Manchester United can keep that up every week and add Casemiro and add Anthony and add Cody Gakpo and maybe even try and get in a right back or a center back, I mean, yo, Manchester United, things are looking a little bit more promising. Ten Hag knows it's going to be a project, but this is this is this is like a rejuvenation victory. This isn't even just Manchester United beating Liverpool. It's Manchester United finally, finally just showing and putting out a real performance, a real performance that the fans could even be proud of. From the first whistle, Manchester United wanted the game more than Liverpool, and the fans were backing them. The fans, you know, despite what you may see on social media, these fans are always 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 give their best for the players now it's time for the players to give their best for the entire organization the entire you know monopoly that is manchester united speaking on the game i'm telling you manchester united played so much better in terms of creating space for one another giving each other passing options you know it wasn't it wasn't ten hog ball like you know we would expect it wasn't the most fluid and slick passing and triangle football and no how many passes can we string together from defense to attack in order to get into Liverpool's box? You know, how effective can we be at defending in a, in a low block when Liverpool are piling on the pressure and then counterattacking with Marcus Rashford, Alanga, Jadon Sancho? I mean, Alanga was causing trouble for Trent the entire first half. You know, these are the things that you would want to see. And for Liverpool... Liverpool have some serious problems. Liverpool always had, you know, a depth issue. But it seems like every time one injury happens, then five injuries happen. And then Liverpool's squad just suddenly can't be as productive as they were. You know, I've been saying this since the summer. Sadio Mane, Liverpool losing him, they're not going to really... They're, they're going to know what hit them very soon. You know, three games, two points. It, it's not panic station by all means for Liverpool, but Sadio Mane was a, was cut from a different cloth. I mean, we see him tearing it up in the Bundesliga. Yes, it's an easier league. It's not as difficult as the Premier League. Doesn't matter. Quality stays quality. Class remains class. And Liverpool, the lack of recruitment this summer, or the lack of, you know, intense recruitment. We saw Tottenham sign more than four or five players. You know, Manchester United are, are what? This is this is not what their fourth signing. Arsenal, Mar um, uh, I'm sorry, Gabriel Jesus, Zinchenko, Saliba came back. Fabio Vieira came in. They're still looking to sign Tiele Mens. They're still looking to sign this player and that player. Pedro Neto. I mean, the lack of real solid recruitment for Liverpool and the injuries that have been piling on. I mean, in this game, could you imagine if Darwin and Thiago were in this game? What the outcome would have been? 
You know, I said earlier to my friends that if Darwin was in this game, it would give Liverpool an actual outlet, cause problems for Martinez. Firmino was dropping too deep and it allowed Martinez to just push out with him. You know, there are so many things you could pick from this game, from both teams, from both sides, but all hats off to Manchester United. But from this point on, every game has to be treated like the Liverpool game. Every single game. Doesn't matter if you're playing Southampton. Doesn't matter if you're playing West Ham, who's, who's scraping it at the bottom of the league right now. Doesn't matter if you're playing Nottingham Forest. Every single game has to be like this Liverpool game. Wow. I'm, I'm just... You can tell, you know, no, no edits in this video, just raw reaction. And, you know, a lot of Manchester United fans will look into this game and be like, wow, we're back. No, Manchester United are not back. They're not. They're not. They're not back. This is a turning point. But just as soon as you can turn things around, can things quickly go sour once again? Ten Hag has to remain vigilant. He has to understand that Harry Maguire is not a good option for the type of football he wants to play. He's not. What's the harm in turning Harry Maguire into a third choice center back? What's the harm in that? He hasn't put up performances that warrant him even being the captain. We saw Bruno Fernandes take the captaincy. And all of a sudden, Manchester United players were lively. They were talking to each other. They were playing for each other. Whenever one player made a mistake and another one covered, they were high-fiving each other. This is what you want to see. Not complaint. Complain, blaming this player, blaming that player. This is what you want to see as a Manchester United fan. This is what you want to see as a Manchester United coach. This is what you want to see as a Manchester United legend. You know, this 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 could be the start of a much better season than last season for Manchester United. Even in their worst season, they finished sixth. And if we're talking about before this game was rock bottom, there's only one way up. Or there's only one way out, and that's up. Liverpool will be okay. Darwin Nunes getting suspended was a problem. That's a problem. Because now Liverpool have to kind of revert to this tiki-taka. And going, you know, going along with Trent Alexander-Arnold is always an excellent option. Robertson, the fullbacks uh, for Liverpool are excellent. But there are times where that game plan doesn't work and Liverpool needs to switch it up. The midfield doesn't have that much creativity. You know, without Thiago, it's more just like two runners and James Milner and Jordan Henderson. They literally just run all game and tackle and play the odd pass. Fabinho coming on gave Liverpool actual stability because he played from that deep lying playmaking role and they actually got back into the game. But man, what a game. What a game. I'm going to try my best to, you know, actually go into the analysis a little bit later on, um, but I'm still trying to set up after it after returning back to my home. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're new and you like what you hear, consider subscribing, it'd be great. Like the video, share it. And if you're a Manchester United fan, congrats.